People who have been around this channel for a while will know that I am a very big fan of Ben 10. So it should come as no surprise when I tell you that one of my all-time favorite games as a kid was this. Ben 10 Protector of Earth is a side-scrolling beat-em-up developed by High Voltage Software and released in October of 2007 on several consoles like the Wii, DS, and PSP. But the one I'm going to be looking at today is obviously the PS2 version because it's the one I grew up with. I really wanted to play this on the PS2 again when I was recording footage for this video, but eventually I decided it might be smarter to play through it on an emulator since it just looks a whole lot better. So just full disclosure, I can't be entirely sure how one-to-one -one it is with the actual game, but hey, it looks pretty good, right? You may be surprised to find that Protector of Earth doesn't adapt any events from the cartoon, instead opting for its own story set I think between the third and fourth seasons, where you encounter previously recurring villains along a plot told through short cutscenes that play before and after levels. Some of them are a bit abrupt and almost feel like abridged versions of scenes from the show, but a lot of it is pretty charming. Gwen, compliment your cousin. Nice watch. Where'd you get it? The game begins with one of Vilgax's bug drones sneaking on board the rust bucket one night and sucking juice out of the Omnitrix. <laughs> That was easy. <laughs> and the following morning, the gang wakes to a meteor falling from the sky, which Ben is excited to go take care of until he discovers that the Omnitrix is malfunctioning for the 10,000th time. It's hero time. Uh, go mighty Omnitrix power. So, Gwen. <laughs> He's so sick of this shit. Gwen. This is the game's explanation as to why you can't use the Omnitrix properly, and why throughout you're only able to access five aliens. I kind of love this reasoning too, if I'm being honest. It's cool to me that they at least tried to come up with a reason for the limitation, rather than just pretending like seven of them don't exist. So, as you might expect, the game from there sees the Tennysons once again making their way across America, trying to recover shards of energy from the Omnitrix. Unfortunately though, this does mean you're going to be spending an uncomfortable amount of time earlier on in the game running around as a 10-year-old child. But never fear, Ben isn't fucking around this time. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't even think we need the other tricks for this one. In Ben form, you can still use basic attacks, and you'd probably be able to make it through every fight in the game without ever transforming. But his most useful ability to normal people is the Dark Souls technique of rolling around enemies until your Omnitrix recharges. At this point in time, you're only given two aliens, Forearms and Heat Blast. Hmm, I wonder who the others might be. Heat Blast has a range of projectile attacks that can hover through the air briefly if you hold X after a double jump, and is also able to absorb fire when the game wants in order to clear your path. And forearms can punch things. Yeah. He can also be used to push boxes and other objects out of the way to help you progress, because apparently the entire foundation of American security rests upon a bunch of switches on the floor. As you can expect in line with Ben 10, each alien transformation only lasts a limited amount of time, and you'll have to recharge it by collecting energy you get from beating the shit out of enemies. In combat, getting your health down to zero doesn't kill you, but instead turns you back into Ben, which arguably is much worse. And from there, if his health bar goes down, you're then greeted with the game's extremely abrupt death screens. <laughs> Oh, okay. Each new enemy encounter prompts Grandpa Max to give you a quick heads up about them. These drones have been upgraded with a laser shot. <laughs> he does sound a bit too excited about some of them though. The Forever Night Champions are part of Enoch's elite guard. He must have placed a very high priority on this mission. He and Gwen also pop in every now and then to give you probably the most condescending hints I've ever heard from a video game. Hmm, which form could you use to put out all those fires? Okay, yes, Gwen, thank you, I'm dumb, I know. Sometimes they're a bit delayed as well, which is always funny. Check for ramps in your area. Looks like Cannonbolt could help here. <laughs> Thanks, Gwen. To break up the combat, you're given three distinct attack buttons to prevent it from becoming a game where you just smash square a lot. Which I did anyway, but hey, they tried. You can also string them together for the game's surprisingly robust combo system that let you pull off more powerful attacks you unlock throughout the game with specific button combinations that you're never going to remember. Your incentive not to just spam attacks, though, is that they do drain your Omnitrix power quite quickly. And they think that's going to stop me. The first level sees you discovering that from the meteor emerges a giant Vilgax robot like the one from the first episode of the show. And it follows you throughout, leading up to your eventual showdown where you come face to face with it. I love that you can see it moving in the background at certain segments. It does a really great job of building up the tension that you're eventually going to have to fight this thing. 
Look, I was 10 years old, okay? I was very intimidated right now. Initially, this fight is all about avoiding its attacks trying to smush you. And as it does so, you're given a short window where you can beat up his hands. When you get its health down to a certain amount, you'll enter a brief segment where you have to turn back into Ben to initiate a quick time event, where he'll then mutilate the robot in some horrifically violent way. And back when I played this for the first time, I didn't know what quick time events were yet, so I thought it was the coolest shit ever. After doing this enough times, you beat it and retrieve a shard of the Omnitrix from inside of its chest. This unlocks you your third alien, Accelerate. From here, you learn about Accelerate's main ability, where if you hold circle, you can use the analog stick to sort of map out a short path for him to attack, letting you combo several enemies in one hit. It's also unfortunately used for puzzles, where you have to hit numerous switches all at the same time or to quickly get through doors before they close. And there's like a 50-50 chance of this being super easy and satisfying or embarrassingly difficult. I don't want to talk about how long some of these took me, okay? The second stage introduces the Forever Knights, which makes doing this look even funnier. And yeah, again here with this next stage, they do a really great job of building up the boss throughout the level, with you gradually ascending in an elevator with this huge robot being revealed in the background. It's so cool, I really like it. When you reach the top, the game teaches you the hard way that it has another type of boss where quick time events can't save you anymore. I believe the game considers these to be mini bosses, but my health bar certainly does not. Beating him causes Enoch to rage quit so hard that he then fucks off to Hoover Dam to fight you again. Does it come to this? The bad guys have run out of cool places to attack, so they just pick a giant concrete slab out in the middle of nowhere? I loved this boss as a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So naturally, this time round, I got absolutely destroyed. The Enoch mech is sort of similar to the first boss, where you have to dodge his tantrums for long enough and then hit whatever's closest to you. Until eventually, he gets tired and rests on a nearby power station. Hey Enoch, you want to see something funny? <laughs> I honestly found this a lot harder than I thought I would, mainly because the window of opportunity to damage him is a lot shorter than you would think, fuck you. But eventually I was rewarded for doing this for 20 minutes because afterward you unlock the best alien. Cannon Bolt. Completing this finishes the first area of the game, of which there are five. And the level select menu was a map of America marking down where you go through the game, which I think is an awesome touch. Unfortunately, to compensate for the fairly impressive variety of level environments, each area is capped off with these arena stages where you just beat up constant waves of enemies you've already fought for what feels like 10 hours. I'm not really sure why these are here to be honest, aside from just making the game longer. Then Kevin Eleven randomly appears from the Null Void, so now you have to go beat him up too. With Cannon Bolt, you now have access to ramps to let you get up to higher platforms or across large holes in the ground. Man, thank god someone had the foresight to put a bunch of ramps everywhere in the middle of the forest. When I made it to Kevin, I remembered thinking as a kid how bullshit I thought it was that he got to use the other aliens and I couldn't. After your battle, you then immediately sent him back to hell. And for the final stage of this act, the developers apparently decided to make it the hardest fucking boss in the history of video games. This thing is so difficult, I don't understand. The plant monster has a bunch of these like, ball sacks that you need to destroy in order to enter a phase where you can attack it with cannonballs. But it's super difficult to get in close because it keeps continually slamming its head down and if you go anywhere near it, it'll lock onto you with more precision than a fucking airstrike. And its attacks eat through your health in two hits and bends in one, which is just so cool. My eventual solution after about 10 deaths definitely did not involve activating the invincibility cheat for this children's video game. And then Ben rightfully fucking murders this stupid thing and so unlocks the fifth and final alien who I bet you're never going to guess my god, no way! With Wild Vine, you gain the option to use his stretchy arms as a grapple hook, which help you with platforming across large crevices whenever the game decides it feels like locking on. Also, the animation for Wild Vine walking always cracks me up. The next stage features the Halloween trio from Season 3, though surprisingly, the first boss you encounter is Hex. When this portal opens, there'll be no stopping my army from turning the earth into a living nightmare! Who sounds a bit different from usual, but I'm sure he's fine. Oh. Oh no. Again, anyone who has ever heard me talk about Ben 10 knows that I was a very big fan of Ghost Freak. So as you can imagine, when I was younger, I was delighted to find out who the boss of the third act was. <laughs> After Ghost Freak's boss fight, you would think that here is the part where you would unlock another alien, but don't worry, they've thought of that already. The Omnitrix is finally at full power, but I can't access my other forms. It's like that last crystal had all its DNA stripped out. Oh come on, boo! To make up for it though, by this point in the game you unlock a partial form of Master Control, where it now lets you switch between aliens instead of having to turn back into Ben every single time. By this point with the combat, I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't get repetitive at times, but it's definitely a lot better than it could be. And it's clear they did their best 
to shake it up every now and then with all of the varied levels and constantly adding in new enemies to fight. I'm fairly sure though that the different aliens don't really provide any particular advantage in combat as none of them have moves that are effective against specific enemies. But I could be wrong because to be honest 99% of the time I was just switching between heat blast and counter bolt so you know. Each enemy encounter is kind of just needlessly long. You would think that one wave would be fine but a majority of the ones in the game have at least two or three rounds of them spawning in so you're always going to be there for a while. And it's one of those games where you can't progress to the next area until you're the last person standing even if there's an open door literally right there in front of you. Please, please let me out. I know that's literally what beat em ups are though so maybe I'm just uncultured. The next area centers around alien mutations based on the transformations you're missing like a diamond head bear, wild mutt dog and a stink fly thing. So it should come as no surprise as to who the next big bad is. You check the main lab. But I don't want to be alone. <gasps> <laughs> Gwen! Nice one, guys. After a brief boss fight with Clancy for some reason, Ben tracks down Animo. Although, to be perfectly honest, Gwen looks completely fine with her current situation. With this one, he'll eventually jump between these pillars where you have to try and knock him down by timing a switch press. But Animo wasn't as stupid as I thought it'd be. And again, much like with the plant, it gets really frustrating because the game doesn't give you invincibility frames in between when you get hit. So if you get caught in an attack with multiple phases, it'll knock you out of your alien form and then kill you instantly as Ben. Thanks to Animo. At this point in the story, we learn that Vilgax has given up and is just straight up trying to send the entirety of Earth into the Null Void. So Grandpa Max decides the best course of action is to break into NASA. And where Protector of Earth rarely lets you be creative in fights outside of combos, there was this beautiful moment where I figured out I could just throw enemies off the edge with forearms. At the end of it all, you run into the CEO of NASA. And after another near impossible boss fight, the Tennysons attach rockets onto the rust bucket and launch it into space. Yeah, if this was anything other than Ben 10, I'd be questioning a few things by now. And this all takes you to the final boss of the game. A ripped as fuck of Vilgax. Holy shit. I think he's a bit pissed we interrupted his gym sesh. This fight again has three phases, all of which I think are really cool in concept. The first is where I discovered that using Cannonball makes it take about a minute where you can just absolutely murder the shit out of him before he even has the chance to fight back. Oh fuck. <laughs> While he's recharging, you have to hit these four machines in quick succession, which causes him to gain the power of flight for no reason, which means you once again have to use Cannon Bolt to knock him down with these conveniently placed ramps on Vilgax's ship in space. The third phase, however, is absolutely fucking impossible because it requires you to immediately turn into Wild Vine and grapple above the ground before Swolgax turns it into a death trap. And the time in between when he uses this attack is faster than your Omnitrix recharging, so essentially if you get hit even once, it'll just kill you straight away. And on top of that, he does this homing projectile attack that knocks you down anyway, so you just what the fuck? I really love the idea of this boss making use of so many of the aliens and even after I found out that you're just meant to knock him to the ground, this bit is so cheap that it nearly ruins the whole thing for me. Finishing Vilgax off is another no, sequence of very violent quick time events where Ben gives a hell of a beatdown with the master control and eventually sends him flying off into the cold vacuum of space to die. Wicked awesome! And from here, you can finally recover the rest of the Chaos Emeralds before the Tennysons get the fuck out of there before the ship is engulfed by the Null Void portal. And that's about it. There's one more stage you unlock from here, but it's just another arena fight level in the Null Void. Yeah, I know. But there is a post credit scene that shows that Vilgax is- <laughs> That's about it from the core game, but there's still a few other things I wanted to talk about. Now I can finally talk about the cheat codes. Many of these are just early ways to unlock things that you get throughout the game anyway, like all the combos in Master Control. And others that are just straight up cheating, like the invincibility, my personal lifeline. But there are also some other neat extra additions like the Dark Hero and DNA Force skins that turn your heroes invisible. There's also a friendly fire option in case you hate your friends or siblings enough in the two player mode I entirely forgot was even in the game. There are galleries where you can view unlockable content like concept art and model viewers for the enemies and bosses, which I spent way too much time looking at as a kid. I'm sure I'm not alone in saying though that I always really hoped there were some hidden aliens to unlock and I remember specifically it was the hero viewer that nearly tricked me into thinking there were way more, when really these slots were just the models for the alternate skins. I suppose maybe Protector of Earth just wasn't given the time or resources to implement the other aliens, or perhaps it was just for the sake of making a better game by focusing on less forms, which is understandable. But I did read something on the Ben 10 subreddit where someone said they could have done something with Ben Wolf, Ben Mummy, and Ben Victor as unlockables, since the enemies they're based off of are already in the game, and they could have just done a quick reskin for them or something. I don't know, it's not really a big deal for me now, and it certainly gave future Ben 10 games something to aspire to. 
10 year old me on the other hand will never forgive you for this. I usually don't like talking about finding aspects of games challenging on YouTube anymore because it always drudges up these comments from people who are always like, oh yeah, well I beat Vilgax when I was still a fetus in my mum's womb before my hands even existed. But I was genuinely surprised to find that the game was as difficult as it was. And there were just these really cheap moments like that third phase in the Vilgax fight and the entirety of that fucking plant monster where you can go from full health to death in one attack and it really weighs down how much I enjoyed it overall. Although with all that being said, this could have been the result of me trying to play through the game as quickly as possible for the sake of the video. So it could be that I might have enjoyed the game's difficulty a lot more had I had any form of patience. And yeah, that's about everything I wanted to talk about. Oh wait, yeah, the DS version. We'll talk about that one another day, okay? Please let me know if you enjoyed this video enough though, because there are plenty of other Ben 10 games out there I'd love to talk about sometime soon and find out I suck at. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.